six. Now, normally, group A strep infections are mild, but in very rare cases, they can become life-threatening. It's thought that five of the children who died had scarlet fever, which then developed into a much more serious condition. This is a really interesting story. Let's get a bit more information now from Dr. Barrett Pancania, who's senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter Medical School. Let's start with understanding what strep A is, first of all, Barrett. So what can you tell me about that? So good morning. Uh, so group A streptococcal infection is a infection by a bacteria, and that bacteria is called group A streptococcus. So how does this kind of fit with scarlet fever? Because it sounds as though the two are very different things. So does scarlet fever begin with an infection of, of this strep A bacteria? Indeed, it does. So you have this bacteria that uh, sets up infection in you. And what scarlet fever is referring to is a series, a collection of signs and symptoms. So you would have a sore, painful throat, enlarged, tender lymph nodes in your neck. You would have a high temperature, about 38 degrees centigrade. You would have aching limbs and muscles. And then, or it doesn't have to be in that sequence, remember, and you may also have a rash that usually starts in the groin, up your trunk and down your arms. And the peculiarities and the particularness of this rash is that it feels like sandpaper. So people often refer to it as sandpaper rash. It has a feel to it. Uh, it's a bit grainy. And similarly, you may have a, uh, a vivid uh, red, pink tongue, and we call it a strawberry tongue. So it's all those signs and symptoms. They don't all need to be present uh, for a group A streptococcal infection. Right. Now, what's going on that, that means we're hearing about this today? Now, obviously, we've got um, a, a very small number of severe cases that have led to death in a very small group of children. So are we seeing a rise in strep A infections that's led to this or is it not that simple? It's not that simple, and it is very unfortunate that six little children have died as a result of this bacterial infection. Uh, it is that time of the year when we have more of uh, such infections, influenza, viral infections, and group A streptococcal infection as well. The thing is that what we need to do is uh, be aware of the signs and symptoms. And if you think that this is a bacterial infection, then uh, early intervention with antibiotics saves the day. And also don't sit on it, meaning let's see if it gets better. If you are starting to feel a lot more unwell, uh, don't rest. It's better to call your doctor. And, and GPs are aware of this and they always prioritise uh, the ill, the vulnerable and the young people to be seen first. It does feel as though we, we've got a lot going around at the moment. Certainly my two children, you know, there, there are children falling down left, right and centre with chest infections and all sorts mm. of horrible things at the moment. Is this happening because it's a kind of delayed COVID effect? So now we're mixing a lot more than we were. Our immune systems are probably not what they were three years ago. Are we going to see a lot of this around this winter, Barrett? No, I don't think this is anything to do with your immune system is not at peak performance. Um, but we need to be aware that sometimes your immune system may react in an exuberant way because it hasn't had frequent, short, simple challenges. Uh, the other point I really wanted to make is this. Um, we, it's very difficult to distinguish between is this a viral throat or is this a bacterial throat? So we have mm. something called a scoring system. Uh, it's called a Centaur score. So the more and more of the signs and symptoms you have uh, suggests it could be bacterial. So let me, for the benefit of our listeners, uh, repeat this. So if you yeah. have a collection of these signs and symptoms, uh, you need to be thinking bacterial. So here goes. Uh, Inflamed tonsils, exudates on your tonsils, a high temperature over 38 degrees, 
tender, painful cervical nodes uh, and aching muscles, generally unwell, you may have a rash. On the other hand, if it is viral, then you're more likely to have a cough, a runny nose and red eyes. So cough, runny nose, red eyes, implication, this is probably viral. Painful throat, painful lymph glands, temperature, rash, more likely to be streptococcal, don't delay, see your doctor, get your antibiotics. That is such useful information, seriously. I wish when I became a parent, someone had told me the difference between a viral infection and a bacterial infection in those terms. It would have saved me a lot of trips to my GP. Da uh, Barrett, thank you. That's Dr. Barrett Pancania on BBC Radio. Hi, Barrett. Thank you so much for that. That was excellent. Really thank appreciate you. your time this morning. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure.